Let me welcome everybody and say Happy New Year, or should I say Happy Blue Year, right? We are in, <laughs> we are in an election year, uh, and I don't care what the pundits say, if we've learned one thing from every election, the pundits have always been wrong. So I still carry hope and optimism and faith that this is a year we can make a change, a dent, uh, a positive movement for the better. So what's been happening in our party over the past month? I'd like to open up with financial updates. Um, our financial balance sheet is strong. Uh, and more importantly, we kicked off a couple of months back a monthly sponsorship program. One of our main objectives for this year is to secure a permanent office, not just one around election time, but one that's 12 months a year, every year, a permanent headquarters for the Greenwood County Democratic Party. We want a place to put our stuff, to make phone calls, to hold meetings, to extend to our Democratic candidates to give them a place to work out of if they need such a place, but to do so, we need to be fiscally responsible and ensure that we have monthly donations coming in that can offset that cost. Now, we went through a intense budgeting discussion within our executive committee in November and December, and we've signed off on a working budget for this year. If we can raise $1,100 a month through regular monthly donations, then we have a real estate agent lined up, ready to take us on tours and lock in on an office within a matter of weeks. The good news is we are more than halfway there, and thank you to those of you who are contributing monthly. Uh, it, it is just warms the heart and is greatly appreciated, and it will be put to good use. There are two ways you can contribute in this fashion, whether it's $5 a month or $25 or $50 a month. Uh, you can do so through our Act Blue account. There is an option there. You can put in your credit or debit card, mark it as monthly, put in an amount, and then it's done. And you'll get uh, extreme thanks from us. Or if you wish for our treasurer, George Swindell, to mail you a monthly statement with a self-addressed stamped envelope for you to conveniently stick a, a check in and return it, we're happy to do that. Just get on his mailing list and he'll be, uh, be thrilled to do so every month. Uh, for those of you that are contributing in non-monetary ways, such as donating food, donating the tablecloths, helping pay for other equipment like the flags that were donated to us, or stamps for postage, or any other in-kind donations, boy, that is also very much appreciated. It doesn't show up in our bank account, but then again it does, because that means we don't have to spend that money to serve food at our breakfast meetings or to uh, uh, honor our stage with our state and country flags. All right, um, I also like to call attention for those that are not familiar with our party or are new to Greenwood County. We have an information table at the back that is uh, being guarded by former President Barack Obama. Uh, he's overseeing our paperwork and info table. I like to try to include something new every month to bring to your attention. Today, it's about voting rights. And there is a nice one-page sheet here for the taking that's called 61 Forms of Voter Suppression. Boy, they can get very creative when it comes time to suppress people, but can, you know, they scratch their heads and wonder what can we do to empower people. 61 forms that we need to be aware of. Uh, feel free to take a copy of this home with you. We'll have this as a permanent part of our table going forward. You know, it's funny when you talk about voting suppression, the thoughts that come out of the Republican Party are just head-scratching. So here is a big advertisement meme from the Texas state GOP, and they have a little note that says, if you can wait in line for hours for testing, you can vote in person. Now what's wrong with this message? It, it just, all the words get stuck 
coming out of the mouth. First of all, should we have long lines to get tested? Right? That's a problem right there. Should we have long lines for voting? No, that's a problem there as well. But at the same token, somebody replied to this saying, well, if you can have at-home kits for COVID testing, why can't we vote from home as well? Right, so I thought that that was a great counter to just such terrible sentiments that are being pushed out, tone-deaf sentiments that are being pushed out by the other parties. Uh, our community care movement um, is in full swing. This is something that we initiated just over a year ago, and every month we do something to be out in the community doing service, bringing together volunteers from the Greenwood County Democrats, led by Ms. Wanda Moore. In December, I'm happy to say that uh, she, along with three AME churches in the region, uh, got together and held two major gift and food giveaways at two areas within our county that were in need of such good cheer. Uh, so I thank her and all of those that contributed to our efforts to bring a little Christmas joy to the places in the county that needed it. Thank you, Ms. Wanda. She wasn't able to make it here because she had missionary work. All right, voter registration. We are alive and well working within the community to get people registered. Last fall, we got a seat at Lander University. This Tuesday, we will be at Piedmont Tech. Our Director of Voter Engagement, uh, Denise Waldrop over there, will be leading a voter registration table at Piedmont Technical School on Tuesday from 10 to 12. What she is in need of are volunteers to help her man the table. We're expecting her to get mobbed, right? With, with hundreds of eager-eyed young students wanting to sign up so they can vote this fall. So if you have two hours to spare, or even if it's an hour, uh, and we can make some shifts, please reach out to Denise. She's over there talking to Reverend Thompson along the wall. Please see Denise after the meeting today and let her know you've got an hour or two to spare. You don't need any knowledge. Um, Denise will get you caught up. We've got all the materials. We just want to be a civic presence, making sure that our youth have a, ch a chance to vote. We have, this time of year, uh, a county convention and reorganization coming up, a precinct reorg. It's been two years since our last one, and it was a weird one because it was virtual. It was right at the beginning of the pandemic, and everything shut the heck down. So we had, with the state party, conducted it virtually. Two years prior to that, we had the courthouse, and we saw the likes of James Smith and Mandy Powers Norrell and others swing through to give their stump speeches. Uh, this year, it will be on Saturday, March 5th. We're going to combine both events into one because we do want to keep um, you know, people's time uh, to a minimum for this type of stuff. So we're going to hold the precinct reorganization first, followed by a convention. Now, in your agenda, on the inside is a list of all of the positions, even within our county party, that are up for election. So up for election are chair, first vice chair, second vice chair, third vice chair, executive and alternate committee man and committee woman. Anybody here is welcome to run. We, 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 we want it. We, we, uh, if you want to be able to contribute and being on, the executive committee is a great way to contribute to the party and uh, help direct its course. Please uh, throw your hat into the ring. Uh, we're going to have online sign-up forms. We're going to have emails that you can send uh, to inquire. We're going to push out more information over the next two months if this is something you are considering. Look, I'm in my second year as chair, and uh, it still feels very new to me. It takes no experience. I did not come from any political dynasty. A lot of what I do, I learned through our previous chair, Mr. Charles Lewis, and observing him and, and taking a lot of his best practices and carrying it forward. Uh, we just want to encourage participation and would like uh, others to have a shot at it. Um, we also have some positions that I know will be open. Uh, I've already heard that some are not going to be able to continue through. 
So be on the lookout for more of that. If you have any questions, I'm an open book, uh, and, and I would be happy to answer any question, even if you wish to run for chair. Uh, bless you for it. It could be yours, uh, and, and would be happy to talk you through it. Uh, I do also want to announce that the executive committee has started creating some bylaws. Normally, we operate under the rules of the South Carolina Democratic Party, and they always um, outrank any other rules that are created. But where possible, we can create our own rules to govern how we do business as a party. A couple of months back, the executive committee passed a resolution stating that we're going to change the cycle of our county conventions. So normally we conduct them during election years. Every two years is an election year, and that's when we hold our convention. It was my experience as a new chair in 2020 to come on board and learn the ropes of being a chair of a party during an election year that involved Donald Trump, during a pandemic nonetheless. Well, that was, that was frightening. That was a lot to overcome and figure out. We have the chair of the Abbeville County Democratic Party, Ms. Brenda Anderson. Welcome, uh, Brenda. Thank you for joining with us today. Uh, she can attest how hard it is to be a first-time chair because they don't give you a handbook. They don't put you through any training program. It's pretty much figure it out as you go along and make phone calls to other chairs and ask what the heck is going on. So by alternating our cycle to be on the odd number of years, on the non-election years. That gives a chair a full year to figure out the business of running a party, and then that chair and the executive committee has the experience to enter into an election year, get through that November, and you know what? The results of that election could be a reflection of how well that chair and the executive committee did, and then the convention occurs the following year in that odd-numbered year. So we are gonna continue with a convention this year, because it's on the books and it's scheduled, but the term will only be for one year. We are going to have another county convention in 2023. So if you don't feel this is your year, you want to watch one more year, well, you'll have another opportunity come March of 2023. Speaking of elections, also inside this packet, a lot of of places open to run for office. And in fact, we have two, three elected officials speaking with us today. Well, two elected and one who ran for office, but, but three who have gone through the campaigning process who have spoke or will speak with us today. Uh, we encourage everybody to give it a try. It is a very rewarding experience, win or lose. After the county convention, there's another general election in Greenwood County that's coming up in May, and that's for school board in districts 51 and 52, that's Ware Shoals and 96. Ladies and gentlemen, it is vitally important that we run for office in our school boards. The school board is not something that you can just let you know, pass by and figure it doesn't make a lot of difference in our community. It is our children and our teachers and the school district employees who operate under the decisions that, make, uh, that the school board makes. Those are critical decisions in education and a work environment. Let me give you an example. In the paper a couple of weeks back, in District 52, and I don't know if you can see this up on the screen, uh, but in a school board meeting that was only partly attended by the school board members, some were not able to attend, they passed uh, a ruling that outlaws critical theory from being taught in their schools and questioned proposals about gender policies. Now, this, th these are things that really have nothing to do with our schools. I'm talking specifically critical race theory, which we know is something taught in law schools and graduate schools, but they get caught up in the hype and in the, uh, the right-wing media and reflected by the elected representatives and the Republican Party that just beat this drum over and over to where the people are regurgitating without understanding and then it becomes policy in the school board. It is vitally important 
that if you are a resident in 96 or Ware Shoals or know of good people who live in those districts, that you talk to them, you consider for yourself running for school board. I know many of the people on the school board here in uh, District 50, um, and, and they're good people, and, and you know what, we've had some crazy speakers uh, come up from the audience in GWD 50 and rail against vaccinations and critical race theory, and the school board, I think, has it pretty well together that they just allow them to vent, but it never actually gets talked about among the board. But these other districts, 51, 52, our children there depend upon it, because um, you know once they say we don't want to talk about critical race theory, that means they don't want to talk about race. That's what that means. It has nothing to do with CRT. It has to do with we don't want to talk about race. And um, so it's, it's vitally important if you have just an inkling of a potential desire to run for something like school board, come see me or anybody else on the executive committee. We can talk you through it. We can put you in touch with other members of the school board who have gone through it and can guide you through that process. But it's vitally important that the people have an option. Even if you're not ultimately successful, a, you know, leaving those seats open is a guaranteed loss. And we don't want that. We want to give everybody a chance at a voice on these boards. All right, we have a, um, a fun activity coming up in a couple of weeks. Martin Luther King Jr.'s uh, birthday that we honor in our country is coming up on January 17th. Um, the Weston Chapel AME Church is going to be a launching pad for the annual walk. And we, as the Democratic Party, are invited to participate. Uh, and if we want to have a group of us show up and carry our banner down the streets along with other groups that would be there, uh, I would love to be able to have a contingent of us to show up. So please let us know if you would like to make it. We'll put the call out in an email as well. Um, but it'll be at 945, that will march to the courthouse. There will be several inspirational speeches that will be given. It's a good time to be had, uh, weather permitting. There's also been a call, I received a uh, phone call from our uh, Director of Elections here in Greenwood County, Connie Moody. She is desperately in the need of poll watchers and poll workers. Well, she needs poll workers. We want the poll watchers. But we'll take either of any. Uh, there is a sheet on the info table that talks about the dollar amount. You can get paid $135 to go through a training session and then work the polls for a day. It is a great experience. I did it in 2020 as a poll watcher. Uh, in the primaries, I did it as a poll worker. I think it's a great way to do some community service. It's kind of like jury duty. You know, you're just giving back to the community for a little bit of a stipend. I enjoyed my 135 bucks. Uh, I spent it on, on crazy food uh, afterwards. It was great. Uh, but poll watchers are also very important. Now, poll watchers are controlled by the parties. Uh, you show up and you really just sit there and observe. And I was a poll watcher at the 2020 November election and I had to intervene a couple of times. I had uh, at the poll that I watched a gentleman walk in with a red MAGA hat on. And we know that's not allowed. The poll workers didn't say anything. That's where the poll watchers come in. So I jumped out of my seat and I said, excuse me, ma'am, and I talked to the poll worker. I don't believe this is allowed. And so they escorted the gentleman out. He threw a little bit of a fit. You know, this is America. You know, yeah, but this is also a polling location and that's not allowed. And he was escorted out. It turned out he wasn't even registered to vote once he removed his hat and came in. So it was all for nothing. It was a big old show. But that's why it's important to have watchers as well. It's not till November, but we do have primaries coming up, statewide primaries in June. We have this election in May for the school board. There's a need for people to participate, several opportunities this year. Please grab a flyer from the info table in the back if you are interested. All right, I'm going to wrap up before we get to our speakers. Uh, you may have seen this in an email newsletter, but if you're not subscribed to our email newsletter, and you should be subscribed, you would know that a couple weeks back, our senator, who is up for re-election this year, running against a couple of candidates from the Democratic Party, uh, he was caught in a big old lie, a terrible one. I mean, as far as lies go, this one was pretty bad. On social media, he posted this picture and wrote about the supply chain problem, blaming it on Biden, of course. 
The supply chain crisis left shelves empty this holiday season. There were gifts under my Christmas tree. I don't know about you, uh, but I didn't run into too many issues this holiday season. Uh, so he posted this photo of empty shelves. He even photoshopped a little elf on a shelf in there. It was a bad Photoshop job, but okay, it was the spirit. You see where he's going with that message. Well, wouldn't you know, because the internet is wide, people see a lot of things, and there's some smart internet sleuths out there. That picture of an empty shelf? That came from a catalog of refrigeration equipment in New Mexico. <laughs> taken years ago. So here, our senator was posting this photo as if it was a supply chain crisis, like he was out shopping at the Piggly Wiggly and found empty shelves and snapped a photo. Oh no, some lazy person on his staff just grabbed it out of the catalog, slapped it up there like it was the real thing. He caught grief for it, and that post was taken down, which is an admission of guilt, by the way, in today's internet social media area. So Tim Scott, we call you out in your lies. You've been lying to us from the beginning. We're going to work our butts off to make sure you don't get to continue those lies at, uh, in November of 2022.